Hey everyone. Yeah, things have been uh, crazy this year. The coronavirus and riots. Uh, the riots still going on. Uh, <laughs> most of the people, I believe, that are um, uh, doing these riots, the anarchists, don't even care about George, George Floyd. I mean, they're also destroying the businesses and, and property of black people as well. Um, so, uh, this whole wokeness. Now, I, I can I see, I can understand a little bit more in the world. But for Christians to actually believe in this, for, 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 for this to infiltrate the church the way that it is, but then, you know, I, unfortunately, what I see around me, I see so many churches who, um, th very shallow, very uh, watered down, keeping people on a baby level of the Bible for the rest of their life. That, you know, that's, unfortunately, that's a plague. Um, there's, there's tons and tons of churches like that. So, you know, it's that verse, of, you know, about people being taken by every wind of do doctrine or uh, philosophy. And, um, yeah, that's pretty much what's happening. I, it's, I, I just almost speechless about how um, so many people, Christians, could be taken in by this. It, it, it bothers me, but I'm, I'm just in shock um, that... Uh, you can't be racist unless you are part of a group of people that are part of a power structure structure that is capable of uh, oppressing people. So you can be, if you weren't a part of that, you could be another group of people and still be racist. And um, you see, this is the problem. Liberals are changing the definition of words to control the narrative. That's what's going on. Um, yeah, racism is sinful, biblically speaking. You know, and, and let's just be real about everything here, okay? There is an extremely, th th there is a lot of racism in the black community. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, it's, you have to be blind to not see that. Obviously not everyone, but there is an extremely high amount of racism uh, in the black community. Um, I, I'm watching tons of videos all over the place of uh, white people being uh, physically assaulted in the street for no reason. Old people, senior citizens being beaten. And because so people are so um, easily brainwashed by stupidity, stupidity. I mean, to get to the point of believing in wokeness, you really have to shut your brain off, be filled with hate, have an agenda, want to believe in anything that makes you feel good. Uh, you know, if you're a, a racist, um, like some people are, um, liberals really get me. Uh, they think they're morally superior to slave owners. But liberals today vote to protect laws so it continue, it could, we can keep it legal to kill babies. You know, just that's what the Democratic Party is about, you know. Uh, keeping it legal to kill babies. That's what you do when you vote Democrat. <sighs> yeah, I uh, would highly recommend um, Dr. James White. He's been doing a really good job speaking against uh, wokeness, exposing the false teachers in it, like Jamar Tisby and you know people like that. Um, so, yeah, I, I would highly recommend that. Um, I, I've said it in past videos all over the place 
uh, Democrats, you know, they, they kill babies with abortions, which is a Holocaust, uh, wanting to sue people for not calling by not for not calling someone by a preferred gender pronoun, which is a form of fascism. So, real in reality, I the only difference between a 1940s Nazi and a Democrat today is only intentions, but the sins are the same. And you have to commit suicide of the brain to not see those disturbing parallels. Really. Um, I'm convinced most of you people who think you know Jesus don't know Jesus. Because um, I don't know what Bible you're reading, but remember when Jesus said, um, you are my friends if you do what I command you? John 15, 14. Yeah. There's, there's no lordship in, uh, in the false Christianity of so many people who profess to be Christians. It's uh, really disturbing. But... I mean, have you actually read Jesus' words? Uh, I mean, have you read where um, Jesus said, Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy, worthy of me, and whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. I mean, you know, there is lordship involved in a relationship with Jesus. He's not just a rabbit's foot. Um, Jesus commands Christians, people everywhere, to repent of their sins. And, you know, you look at places like Galatians 5, 19 to 21, and places like that, and you'll see, you know, there's a list of sins there, and it says people who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Uh, Christianity is not about living any way that you want. We're commanded to live holy because Jesus warned, you can, be, you can believe in Jesus and do all kinds of good works and still go to hell. Uh, Jesus in Matthew seven twenty one to 23, Jesus said these words, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, do we not prophesy in your name and, and cast out demons in your name and do mighty works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. So there, there is a lordship involved in um, a relationship with uh, Jesus or you're not truly saved. Um, you're still under the wrath of God, which Jesus spoke of eternal punishment, hell, um, weeping and gnashing of teeth uh, where the worm never dies, where the fire is never quenched. Um, now, in 2016, I didn't vote for Trump because I thought he was going to be more <clears throat> liberal uh, than... Now, I'm not saying that he's a Christian. I don't believe that. I get Republican Christians mad at me for that. Um, he said that he never repented. I mean, that's an essential part of the gospel, of becoming a Christian. Um, so... I didn't vote for Trump in 2016. Um, there was that video circulating uh, how Trump said that he was very pro-choice. And, you know, he got elected and he knows who his, who his supporters are. So he seems to be um, favoring some uh, conservative agendas. So you look at the other side, you look at Democrats, they want to defund the police and now you're seeing anarchy in the streets mayors telling people to just do what the, the anarchists want you to do yeah and pushing Marxism 
which was communism, uh, socialism are not friendly governmental systems to the Christian church, but there are people who are actually out there who actually say they're Christians and would vote for that. You know, I've said a number of times before, um, having a biblical worldview is that we look at everything through the lens of what the Bible says, and all of our actions are guided by our theology. And since voting has to do with moral issues, the Bible addresses. Um, that's why we Christians, you can't help it. You, you want to vote for the uh, most conservative way possible. Um, do we have the best choices right now? Of course not. But I'll tell you, one side is somewhat better than the other where, um, you know, a Christian cannot give his, you know, blessing on, um, gay marriage. Jesus said that marriage is uh, between a man and a woman in, um, Matthew 19. <clears throat> and, um, Bible is clear that homosexuality is sin that leads people to hell. So yeah, not, it's not politically correct, but you know, to be a real Christian, you have to take political correctness, throw it out the window if uh, that political correctness is contrary to um, what this book teaches. And you, you do not find wokeness in this book. Um, that is eisegesis, uh, inserting something into the Bible that's not there. Um, yeah. So, if you look at the early church, the early Christian church, it did not function in a woke type of a way where there was supposed to be Jews over here and Gentiles over there. That You don't find that in the New Testament. That's not the way the church is supposed to be. But because people are a bunch of, um, you know, wimpy, cowardly, pansies uh, in the church they fold to political correctness and that's why you have all this liberal stupidity coming into the church i mean one of the reasons is because the churches are so watered down so you're not making the unregenerated person feel uncomfortable about his sins to repent so there's tons of unregenerated people in the church that have no problem with any kind of heresy, false teaching. And by the way, to, to tell a group of people that they can't be racist, let me be really clear what I'm saying. So there's no, you know, um, misunderstanding by telling black people that they can't be racist because they weren't a part of a power structure encouraging black people to live in sin and telling them that it's not sin when the Bible clearly says it is sin, that is heresy. That is false teaching. And look at the fruit that it's producing. Um, like I said, I've seen tons of video videos recently. Um, I posted them of um, uh, white people being violently attacked um, in the streets and all kinds of places um, by black people, be, they're being fed this stupidity, telling them that y y you can't be racist. You can hate other people for their color and judge them being another color, but that's not racism. Um, like I said, liberals, um, they change definitions of words to control the narrative. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I saw this meme and I, I liked it. Um, someone jarred Price. He posted this nonsense where there was a response to it. Um, <clears throat> if you are a Christian and can't handle Black Lives Matter without feeling the need to respond with a criticism that all lives all lives matter, then crack open your Bible and hit up Luke 15. Uh, don't have it handy? Let me summarize. By the way, Black Lives Matter is a Marxist, antichrist, baby-murdering organization 
that is liberal, pro pro homosexual. Um, you know, they're they. <laughs> You think black lives matter, but if you vote Democrat, 65% of all babies that die in abortion are black babies. So you call yourselves black lives matter and you vote to kill 65, you know, 65% of the babies are black. You're a hypocrite. You're just, but people are afraid to say that. Uh, They call out that hypocrisy and that's what it it is. It's pure hypocrisy. So anyway, sorry, um, this meme is going to eisegeet Luke 15 to promote wokeness. <clears throat> it says there are 10, there are 10, uh, I'm sorry, there are 100 sheep, but one goes missing. Jesus leaves the 99 and goes after the one, the 99. But what about us? Don't we matter? Of course The 99 still matter, but they're not the ones in danger. The one is, I'll say it again, Black Lives Matter. So someone made a meme about this, and uh, I don't know if it was Jeremy. I'll just read the response. I don't know if it was Jeremy Huss, that's the name here, but is this how we should read Luke 15? Were the 99 systematically racist? When the lost sheep returned to the flock, did he become radicalized? Did he begin burning and looting the city of the 99? Did he begin beating the 99 other sheep? Shining lasers in their eyes to blind them, shooting their kids in the streets, throwing rocks at them? And terrorizing their community? Did the 99 sheep deserve any of this? Would Jesus be pleased with the lost sheep to condone his wicked... Would would Jesus be pleased with the lost sheep or condone um, his, his wicked actions against the innocent of the 99 who did nothing to instigate such anarchy? Is this how Luke... 15 became a radically charged message of the social justice instead of a message of salvation. Karl Marx would be proud. Luke 15 is a message of salvation that no matter how full uh, God's house already is with the righteous, the lost in this world are important enough to Jesus to leave his house and go after just one lost sheep to bring them in. Jesus said, all the angels in heaven rejoice when one sinner repents for God so loved the world. The blood of Jesus being spilt on Calvary proves that all lives matter. Jesus died died to save sinners. And um, Romans 10, 12 to 13, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek for the same Lord Overall is rich unto all that call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I don't believe in twisting scripture to push a Marxist agenda is pleasing to the Lord. So, yeah. And, and, And that's another thing. People now are going up to people and asking them the Black Lives Matter. And if you say all lives matter, then you can possibly be physically assaulted. And they don't see disturbing parallels between themselves and 1940s Nazi fascists. Well, this country um, is uh, under the judgment of God. God has withdrawn his grace uh, just look at Romans 1, 18 to 32, uh, Isaiah 5, 20. Um, we uh, calling, you know, we're doing things what's right in our eyes. Um, uh, a nation that is divided is a judgment of God. Uh, Isaiah uh, 19, um, I think it's verse 2, with the Egyptians. So <clears throat> that's what's happening right now. Um and who are you going to want to vote for? Is a, is a real Christian 
going to want to vote for the side that kills babies and um, wants to defund the police. So the next time you call the police, you know, grandma, grandpa, they're getting their house robbed. And, you know, what are they going to do? And not that I, I ever thought that Trump is a saint, but um, at least the other side, at least they don't want total anarchy. And unfortunately, I wish there was more. Um, uh, there's many on that side who um, are against abortion, killing babies, and so on. So it really bothers me that this stupidity, stupidity of wokeness is um, being accepted by people who call themselves Christians. I mean, I mean, I'll, I'll look at wackos like, you know, Kenneth Copeland. And I'll also be blown away about how people can um, call themselves Christians and follow him. Um, but like I said, uh, there is a tremendous amount of churches who keep their people on a baby level of the Bible. There's a lot of unregenerated people in the churches, including pastors. And they get taken by everyone of doctrine. And they want to be loved. Um, uh What's her name? Oh, that woman. She's also woke. Anyway. Um, so you have, pe you know, Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me and my words, and I'll be ashamed of you. Mark 8, 38. So if we see anything that is contrary to biblical doctrine, people trying to eisegete things, take preconceived ideas, read them back into the scriptures, and interpret them in a way that they weren't originally intended to be interpreted. Um, that's the problem. So many Christians don't study how to interpret the Bible, how to do exegesis. Um, the background, you know, historical context, and whole nine yards. So you have a, a, a church world full of people who um, they'll accept practically anything and call anything Christian because um, they are terrible at interpreting the Bible. So, um, yeah, I would highly recommend uh, Dr. James White's ministry, Alpha and Omega Ministries. He has a podcast called The Dividing Line on YouTube. And um, it has, uh, he's been dealing a lot with um, the wokeness nonsense. And he does exegesis. He exegetes the scriptures um, on his program, and you could learn from his books, his program, on how we should um, correctly understand the Bible and uh, interpret it so we won't be um, taken in by all kinds of false teachers who want to import. Um, they want to um, put all kinds of craziness of their own agendas and you know try to use any Bible verse just to support that. We need to, if we really love God's word, we want to know what it, its original intent is and what it's really talking about and not, you know, make the Bible our personal play toy like so many people do and call themselves Christians. So I um, hope that was helpful. <laughs>